Intel recently decided to release a brand new CPU, the 13900K SS. I mean, sorry, the 14900K. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Chamber here, and yes, I did decide to pick up a brand new 14900K. Why did I do this? Because I want to give you guys the truest and best results. I decided to pick one up with my own money on launch day, right at 9 a.m., and just see how it really does perform. And when I picked up the CPU, I was honestly pleasantly surprised with the experience I had. When I picked up my 13900K back in December of this year, it was very, very hot. If you guys don't remember, I literally had to deload that CPU just to get it to run at a decent temperature. It was really, really bad. This one ran really, really well out of the box. I was pulling about 400 watts, getting really respectable temperatures, just stock with hyperthreading disabled, obviously. I don't use hyperthreading. The experience was actually fairly well. I loaded up my profile for my 13900K, and all I did was I increased my memory frequency by 200 megahertz from 7600CL36 to 7800CL36, and it just worked. Like, it was, it was very, very impressressive. I am on 2x24 on a Z790 Tachyon, by the way, just in case you're like, oh, why is that so low for an enthusiast? The core was a little bit of a different story. So I have a Gigabyte board, and their way of kind of SP, their SP feature, comparable to Asus, is called Biscuits. I was getting about 84, which is about an average chip. With the exact same voltage as my 13900K, I accomplished... The exact same overclocks as my 13900K. Like, honestly, it was not impressive at all. I was like, this chip sucks. Same exact frequencies on everything. And I was like, oh, I got a dud. I started increasing the voltage, and it was increasing it to voltages that I couldn't hit on my 14900, on my 13900K, but were still safe. So what was I able to accomplish on this? I was able to accomplish 5.8 gigahertz all-core, 4.5 on the E-cores, and 5 gigahertz on the ring, basically giving myself 100 megahertz on every single one compared to my 13900K. My 13900K for these vi for this video is running at 5.7 on the P cores, 4.4 on the E cores, and 4.9 on the ring. Basically, everything got 100 megahertz boost, and the RAM got 200 megahertz. This isn't some top tier bin. It's just a average 13900K versus an average 14900K. So I decided to test plenty of competitive and synthetics for you guys just because I wanted to make sure that you guys got the best results possible. This video was fully funded by me and my supporters. Shout out to every single person who pays to be in the Discord, pays to support me, all of my supporters. I really, really appreciate it. You guys make these videos possible. Same thing with everyone who buys my FPS boost optimization service. Like You guys allow me to buy all these products and test them for you guys on launch so that I can continue making awesome videos. They really do appreciate it. If you want to support the channel, you can do it down below. The links are there, along with affiliate links to buy these products if you're interested. But let's get into the benchmarks. Starting out here with Cinebench 2024. This is the latest version of Cinebench, and you're getting about 0.2% difference in multi-core. In the single core, you're getting about 2.2% three points but when you compare 50 5.8 divided by 5.7 you get about 1.7 so it basically just it's the difference in the 5.7 versus 5.8 this really isn't that big of a deal here you're going to notice no real world performance difference in rendering compared to these two cpus when overclocked for rift breaker this one did actually give a little bit more of an fps boost it won it's once again the 14900k is marginally faster that's what you're going to notice through basically all of these you're getting a couple more FPS, but you have to think about this. I, If you spent $600 last year, you're going to spend $600 again for a CPU like this. So, yep, it's faster. If you want the absolute fastest, this is the CPU to buy. If you just want just that little bit more performance, but you're probably also just going to buy a 1400 KS in a couple of months. Now we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This is with 720p lowest settings possible, and oh, it's basically a tie. 1400K wins by a couple FPS, couple of percentage, two, three percent um, in the averages, but the CPU mins are the exact same. So this is also 720p. Think about it. When you go to 1080p, the difference is going to be marginalized. Think about what happens at 4K. It's going to be the exact same. So unless you're going for like super duper competitive 480p, CS source FPS doesn't matter. Just 
it's basically a tie run to run variance now for a single player title this is with all max settings ray tracing basically opposite of shadow of the tomb raider and you do get a little bit of an fps boost especially in those lows that's something that actually is really going to help i'd like to think that's from the p cores especially because this game is still cpu bound even though it is ray tracing just because the 4090 is so fast that this is a cpu bound game so this shows that in even a ray tracing title you're going to be noticing some FPS differences just because the CPU is so fast. Another ray tracing title is Cyberpunk, and the max FPS is slightly higher on the 1300K, two FPS run around variants. The averages are about the same, minimums are about the same. They, they give or take. So it's the same gaming experience. Are you gonna notice the difference between 87 average FPS and 86 average FPS? Absolutely not, but hey, 1400k might be a little bit more consistent is what i could say rainbow six siege thousand fps simulator as you can see you're getting about you're getting okay 1180 versus 1220 this will be the exact same performance the fps difference isn't even that big the averages are about the same you get maybe 20 more fps than the average when you actually reload into an actual match though the fps is going to be the exact same especially if you do what i recommend cap use g-sync use v-sync you're not going to have any of these issues looking at brand new counter-strike 2 this average fps really does confuse me but then like look the lows are worse on the 1400k so maybe it hit like a maybe you know run to run variance it like hit like a really good spot like that fps pixel that's is definitely what could have happened here but these are going to perform the exact same i played a round or two a death match with both of the cpus it feels the exact same Shout out Fortnite for giving basically the same FPS. This is with a replay, by the way. This isn't like a benchmark or anything. I'm just using the replay. Fortune Hunter K has better averages, but 600 FPS, cool. Like the lows are the exact same basically. And we're really focusing on the lows. We want to get those high. Your lows as high as possible. That's gonna make the gaming experience feel much better. And last but not least, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. It's a tie. Oh, okay, maybe you get one more FPS, one to two more FPS on the 1400K. Are you going to notice that FPS? Absolutely not. Maybe Modern Warfare 3 will be the answer to this, but I don't know. It's just so underwhelming. Like, it's really, really cool, but it isn't like I have a really good 3900K. I have an average 3900K. The 3900K S's that do 5.9, 6 gigahertz all core and like 8,000 with no problem on a tachyon. They're going to destroy this 1400K. So if you have one of those CPUs, what really should you be doing now? So first of all, if you really want to buy a 1400K, go ahead, use the affiliate links. But if you have something like even a 1300K, like any normal 1300K, my best response, if you have $600 to spend, is buy a brand new Z790 Apex Encore or wait for the Z790 Tachyon X to release. Those two motherboards are going to give you a better performance boost than any cpu can as for what i'm going to be doing i'm just going to be shipping this back to bezos but anyways that's going to do it for the video let me know what your thoughts are on the 1400k do you think it's worth it do you think that people should be picking this up even if they are just wanting to upgrade or should they stick to a cheap 3900k if you've enjoyed this video hit that like button down below subscribe if you haven't already feel free to support me using the links down below as well as the affiliate links all those help support the channel and make me money, allowing me to continue buying co products on day one to make content for you guys. But I will see you guys later. Peace.